Alright everyone, how's it going? So in today's video, it's going to be a short one. I'm going to be showing you the one tool in Lightroom, which I think it could just be the best tool in Lightroom. I'm going to show what it is, I'm going to show how to use it, when to use it, a load of different tricks and how I use it especially to make such a difference to a photo. Like this is a tool that you can use to make a simple photo look so much more pleasing. So let's jump straight into the tool, which I think is the best tool in Lightroom. Now, obviously you're not gonna edit a photo without having gone through the rest of the settings and using all the tools, getting your colors, getting your exposure and everything like that. But this tool will be good for refining the finishing touches on an image. So first of all, just edit your image as you want and then pop to this tool afterwards. And yeah, I'm gonna show you some really quick uses of it right now. So the name of this tool is the selection tool, but before you go, I know about the selection tool, it's not just general selection tool, it's the specific use of a selection tool that makes it so great. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the best trick using the selection tool to make an image more moody. Now, usually a moody image will be dark and have some feelings to it. And when a lot of people edit these, they tend to just go to a vignette and put a vignette on it. They're like, oh, that looks kind of old fashioned. It does, but it does to a point, it looks kind of cheap. Instead, if you want to get dark edges to your picture, if you want to draw the subject's attention right into the middle of the picture, darken the edges, but use a gradient filter. So just tap on the plus sign, draw a gradient filter, then decrease the exposure. And the great thing about this is that if you've drawn your gradient exposure over a part of the image you want to keep, you can press on this little erase button, and then you can erase that part. So it'll darken up everything around it but not that selection that you've erased out. So that's just one use of the linear gradient. And now a good use of the circle gradient, radial gradient, I should say, sorry, circular. Mm. Anyway, you know which one it is, it's the circle one. The best way I've found to use the radial gradient is for your face. If you have a picture, especially if your face isn't like prominent in the picture, like if you're just in the background or like it's you and some mountains behind you looking epic or something like that, where it's not just a portrait crop, then you just want to smooth your face and make it look a little bit simpler, a little bit smoother. What I do here, really fast, you just go to radial filter, press plus, draw a radial circle around your face, and then you just go to clarity and just decrease clarity a bit, decrease the texture, play around with these, and that basically will smooth out your skin. And while you're here, you can also change the temperature of your skin on this. Then you can look more tanned, less tanned, whatever you want. As an Irish person, we always go for more tan, so we'll crank up that temperature. Okay, and the third really cool trick using these gradients is the brush gradient. Now, this is so cool because you can isolate certain areas of the picture without affecting the whole picture. So, let's say you have a picture of you in the woods, right? There's loads of green trees behind you, and on this day, you just happen to be wearing a green jumper also. For this picture, obviously to get that kind of orange teal, kind of orangey look, you want to make those greens turn orange. But if you do that through the temperature settings and through the color selection, you're gonna make all the greens in the picture orange. So if you change the trees to orange, your jumper is also gonna change. And maybe that'll look weird because you want to keep your jumper the same color as it actually is. So what this brush gradient is really helpful to do, all you do, you just draw around the area of color you'd like to change. And then you go to this little color palette here. You can choose a color, you can change the hue, you can do everything you want and it's specifically only to that area. So that's just so cool. It can speed up workflow so much and it can be done on your phone, on your iPad, on your laptop, on your desktop, whatever you edit on. It's really easy. It's not free to do on any of the Lightroom apps. You have to pay five euro a month for the app version of Lightroom to use this tool. But like, if you're gonna be editing using Lightroom, you might as well buy the five euro app version. There's no point in, you know, if you're downloading Lightroom, you're obviously advanced enough editors that you, you want these extra features. And yeah, I don't think that, you know, saving five euro in one month is worth sacrificing all these features that'll make your game so much better. So I always think it's better to invest in yourself because it'll pay itself back in the long run. So the reason I'm saying this could be the best tool in Lightroom is because it is my favorite tool in Lightroom. It's so good for just making those tiny little corrections to an image because often those tiny corrections are the ones that make the image go from standard to better. So if you just have a picture of a leaf, let's say, and it's bright on the edges, you just get that linear gradient, drag it in from loads of edges. The next thing you got, boom, a moody leaf. Loads of different uses. This tool is so good. So I really recommend anyone who has Lightroom or is thinking of downloading Lightroom or is into photo editing at all, use these gradients. 
they're so cool and the more you use them the more use, uses you'll find for them like changing colors selectively edit everything like that and yeah if you want any help or any other tips like that feel free to message me or leave it down in the comments below if you ask a question in the comments below it's kind of nice for other people to see the answers to those questions if you do ask one and also actually if you do have a really good question I'll actually just post it, the question in my video next week and then I'll answer it for everyone and I'll also give you a shout out so if you want to leave a question with your Instagram handle I'll give your Instagram handle a shout out and answer your question alongside it so I hope you enjoyed that video nice and short nice and simple and really recommend using those filters so yeah I appreciate it if you tap subscribe before you left because uh, that would be awesome and I really appreciate it. Also, before you leave, for the first time ever, I've actually got blur in the background of my video. Look at that. Let me see. Contrasty colors. Anyway, alright, see you in the next video.